Hello everybody, it's me again, Roman, and RPA Fridays, session number 33. This time I will be talking about how to edit config XLSX in UiPath without Excel. So, allow me a brief introduction. My name is Roman, I'm from Robot ICT, company based in Czech Republic, where we focus on process automation and uh, automation of business processes using RPA is one of our main focus. I'm a developer, also a team leader, and I'm ready to help you in case you need. So if you have any questions further to this topic or to another one, feel free to uh, reach to the comment sections or uh, follow the link to our community forum where you can become a member and ask questions. So uh, today's topic. Imagine you will have a you have a scenario where you develop some automation on a machine uh, Maybe it's a remote machine. Usually it's like that. It's a virtual machine You access it remotely and the machine is usually only for the RPA purpose setup So there is a, usually only the software that it needs to be automated then the UI path uh, robot and uh, You are trying to set up some project or process in a reframework that's robotic enterprise framework that has one component uh, config.xlsx this component is crucial because uh, most of the local settings is saved in this uh, file and on the machine if you are also developing it on the machine right on that machine where you develop it there is no excel then you have a little bit of a trouble to open it and to amend it so uh, today we will take a look at how to use it, how to use UiPath actually to help us. But before we go there, let's see what options we actually have if we don't have no uh, any Excel on the machine. Well, if we, if it's possible, infrastructure-wise, we can always copy the file to another machine, for example, to our personal machine where we have some Excel editor, uh, change it and copy that back. It's not uh, super convenient, it can be a little bit uncomfortable and maybe you will get a little bit confused from it. Um, also, you can try to install some trial version of Microsoft Excel or some a free alternative like OpenOffice or LibreOffice. But let's suppose you don't have that much rights on that machines, you cannot just install anything you want, uh, but you still have UiPath Studio already there allowed, then of course we can use UiPath to edit Excel. It would be lovely if this option will be somehow natively integrated to UiPath Studio, maybe one day, but today I will show you a little trick, a little hack, how to do that, and not only how to do it, like how to hack it, but actually how to do a nice process that will generate a friendly user interface to edit the config file. Are you curious? So let's take a look at that. Today I decided I will not build the process uh, to uh, solve our issue uh, step by step, but I will guide you through something I've already built and I will uh, show you step by step, activity by activity, what is going on. Um, as an introduction, this is a simple uh, workflow, one sequence uh, should be fairly easy to replicate by even beginners. Uh, for this to work, I will utilize something called UiPath Forms which is a package that allow for attended automation, for attended robots to interact with the user, to present a form, to fill in some fields, or vice versa, to uh, present some uh, outputs, some results. It's a really rich, interesting package, and uh, we will be using it, and I will show you how, and I will partially rebuild it. Uh, so watch closely, but first of all, for your uh, project, for starting from scratch, you need to manage packages, and find uipath.form.activities, right? You can always search in the official uh, thread here and uh, once you type in form, you should be able to uh, locate the uh, correct package. Then you just install, hit the save button, wait for a while and you're ready to go. So first of all, I put the sign here in case I wanna directly assign the path to my uh, Excel file but the next activity is actually rewriting the, um, the value config file path where I'm storing the path to a config file and um, just to say this workflow only can work with the config files not by, with any generic excel files but I guess if you are uh, cool enough you can create your own excel editor just out of UiPath if you, if you wish really um, but this is a simple example 
So then there is the activity browse for file. This one will pop, uh, pop a window and give me option to select the correct file. Uh, so maybe before I will go a bit further, let's imagine we can install some processes. Uh, we can run some processes on that machine from, from studio or from uh, maybe orchestrator. We can uh, publish this uh, little workflow uh, and then run it uh, on our machine from, uh, from the tray, from the assistant, for example. That could be really nice. And then so it gives us the option to uh, choose the correct file, right? So I will once I will show you how to how it how it runs, I will show you how it uh, works. It will open a window. I will select the correct config file, and then uh, reading the three important sheets. That's pretty simple. I'm using the good old read range workbook activity to read the uh, settings, constants, and assets, and I'm saving them into three data table variables called settings dt, constants dt, and assets dt. Right. So far, easy. I'm just reading the data out of the config file. And then now it starts to be pretty interesting. We have this create form activity that comes from the uh, package UiPath forms, which doesn't look that interesting for the first sight, but we need to take a look at a few things. I mean, there are, are tons of things that you can adjust in this activity. I will not go through all of them. It's a really big topic. But what we want to do is to search in properties for form fields collection here where it says data bindings open this little thing by the three dots and here actually we can bind the data tables we just read uh, to our uh, fields right so these names settings constants assets I just made up I just uh, somehow I just called it as I want and assign the value uh, to these fields I will then in the next step uh, take the data from these fields, uh, from the data tables and put it into these fields. So on the right side, we have our data table variables. On the left side, just some field names that I made up. They are the same, just they are missing the DT. If you do this as a first step before the next step, uh, after clicking the open form designer button, it will prompt you to, if you want to automatically uh, bind it to some result and I advise you to say no, to do it yourself step by step and it will be easier. I'm telling to the create form activity that I want to work with the data tables that are from the Excel file. By the way, back here, the direction in and out, both, that's important. Uh, so we can then uh, amend the data and save it back to the data table so we can do changes in the data tables. Right, so let's go to the open form designer. If I open this, it will load for a while and give me a little bit of like a form editor. I will make it bigger. So on the right side, this is our preview of how the form uh, will look like. On the left side, we have some building blocks, some components, a basic, advanced, layout, data, and so on, so on. So you can just drag and drop stuff inside and then play around. Uh, you can see that I have settings, con constants here, and assets. These are called tabs. And I just found here in the layout uh, this little uh, field called tabs. So that's what I drag and drop inside. And then once the tabs are in, the, the, this, all, this all thing, these are tabs, you can also add or delete tabs. Each of these component is, once, once you have your mouse over it, uh, will allow you to hit this little edit button, for example, this one. And you can see that this is a tabs component. And here are all my tabs with their keys and labels and so on. Uh, so just to, for exa as an example, how I build these tabs, uh, I will try to uh, show you. So I will hit add another, let's call it settings2, just for clarity. The key here doesn't really matter. And I will click save and we have uh, another tab here. So now it's an empty place. It says drag and drop a form component. And now how to display the data table in, in, a, in a grid or in, in a table, how to get the, the details from the data tables. So you want to use data grid. So I will drag and drop the data grid in. Let's give it a name. I will call it settings. And what is important, the field key must be matching the key that I created just previously, which is settings, that's all correct, right? For each column, I want to insert one text field in order to be able to edit that column field. So let's do it. 
So first one, and now maybe we need to check what are the, actually the column uh, names in config. So I have some random config file here. And you can see that for settings, it's name, value, and description. Okay, name, value, description. Let's just remember that. So this one will be called name. But you have to go to field key also and the property name to change it with the big big letter N. Otherwise, it's not work. It's not working. I don't know why. But this property name needs to match the column name in the data table. Okay. So let's save it, and you would continue with the another one. So a text field, which will be called value, and you want the same. You want the same name be in the property name. Save and so on so on so there will be there would be third one description then result will look like this settings right name value description all with capitals and what actually will happen is that the table will have of course lots of rows then all these fields will repeat until the end of the table for each row there will be all these fields editable you will see it's kind of magic so I will just delete this, it was just an example. So let's go back to this tab and delete it. Ooh. No questions, just straight delete and uh, hit save, close it. And that's it. And then once uh, I will run this process, you will see it will read all the data from the config. And if I will do any change, it will write it back. But writing it back to the uh, Excel, that, that's something I need to do. So there are three write range activities that are taking care of that. As I said, this is a simple script. Maybe you want to introduce a loop here, right? For each uh, of these um, sheets and so on. Of course, I just wanted to keep it simple for the demonstration. So uh, this is what we have. I think it's time to run it. So just that you know, here I have a config. And this config file has a few rows. For example, let's take a look at the settings. There is some report prefix, confidence threshold. Let's try to, for example, change this thing, confidence threshold. Uh, so that's uh, 0 0.8 and we will change it. So I will run it. So I open the correct config. And here you can see the data. It's nice and you can edit everything. So here are settings, constants, and assets. You can even add a new row here if you want to add new settings or constants. Just to be a bit careful with deleting the rows because if you delete uh, some of them, then by using simply a right range, then the last one, or let's say the amount of what you delete, the last one will be not rewritten. The, it will not automatically clear the table. But let's do a change. So let's put 0 0.75 so we know that uh, you can trust me that this is working. So I will hit save changes. Uh, the process will end. And let's see the file if it has been uh, amended. There is the change and everything works as expected. Uh, wait for it. And there we go, 0 0.75. We just made an edit to an Excel file without actually having an Excel because you don't need Excel for this. Um, so yeah, that was a, a little example. Maybe you have never heard about UiPath forms and now you know that you can use it for even this scenario. I hope you like it. As I said, there is a little limitation to uh, what will happen in case uh, you will delete some rows. Yeah, right, because you read range and then you write range over the data that's still in the config. So if you will decrease the amount of rows, then some of the rows uh, from past will still stay in the file, but I guess you can play around with that. So that's it. If you have any questions to the topic, feel free to ask in the comment sections. I will be happy to answer them. And uh, yeah, uh, if you like the video, feel free to hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, there's also a link to download this example in the video description. So if you just want to use it and don't want to build it yourself, then it's fine. You can do it and uh, you will be linked to our community, Robot IC Community Forum, where I'm personally answering any interesting questions that you might uh, encounter. So that's it. I wish you have a really nice working robots. And as always, happy automation. <laughs>